Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic is the Zohair short-range aeroballistic missile. First unveiled in 2020 under the name ROD 500, this missile system features a unique 500mm diameter booster made of carbon fiber composite. This was a groundbreaking development when revealed, as previous Iranian motor casings for solid propellant missiles are only known to have utilized more primitive forms of composite casings and primarily steel alloys. The announced range of 500 kilometers highlighted its status as one of the best performing short-range ballistic missiles in the world, considering its size and weight. It may even qualify as the best ballistic missile in its class. The woven carbon fiber motor casing significantly reduced the booster structural weight, the primary indicator of ballistic missile performance. But this alone did not enable it to deliver a 320 kilogram warhead to over 500 kilometers. The other technological breakthrough was the maneuverable re-entry vehicle, MARV, featuring a highly aerodynamic design with a very small diameter nose tip and slender conic shape, offering a relatively high lift-to-drag ratio. The development of its small diameter carbon-carbon composite nose tip was a key technological enabler to make an aeroballistic missile like the Zohair feasible. Compared to its competitor, the Fateh F variant with a 500 km range, the Zohair has half the weight and benefits from a separable re-entry vehicle. This not only reduces radar cross-section, but also employs a technique to increase the missile's range through skip trajectory maneuvers. Features like skip trajectory maneuvers or pseudo-random evasive maneuvering require key breakthroughs in guidance system technology. The deceleration forces which occur at re-entry of the atmosphere are difficult to handle by the sensitive components. The Zohair and its comparably low burnout speed likely made this hurdle easier to take than for its successors, such as Kbar Shekan. The MARV's large steering fins enable very early steering authority upon re-entry, allowing it to alter its dive trajectory and bounce off the atmosphere as early as possible. It bounces back to low drag layers of the upper atmosphere after each dive. It is believed that the Zohair's MARV performs several such sinusoidal maneuvers, adding a glide component to its ballistic trajectory and thus increasing its range. Once its kinetic energy in the form of speed is depleted to a certain minimum threshold, it tries to retain the remaining speed by performing a steep dive towards its target, while executing evasive maneuvers. The Zohair is a special purpose weapon designed to defeat endo-atmospheric ballistic missile defense systems. It also marked a significant development milestone for the IRGC Aerospace Force design team whose increasing experience led to future advancements in the Kbar, Shaykhan, and Fata series of hypersonic ballistic missiles. The Zohair is light enough to be mounted on modified fighter-bomber aircraft for air launch, such as the IRGC Aerospace Force's Su-22 bombers, a capability that was likely a key requirement that may have influenced its creation. Although it remains uncertain if Iran will pursue an air-launched variant, doing so could potentially extend its range up to three times. Air launch would allow for unexpected attack vectors where the aircraft can fly and launch from positions which create new threat directions for the targeted adversary. Hence the tactical flexibility and benefits air launch would offer are highly attractive. The Marvi and nose tip design should be capable to support an air launched range of around 1,500 kilometers without notable modifications. The compactness of the Zohair also allows for multiple missiles on one truck launcher. Observed were variants with four or more missiles stored in sealed containers. Such a launcher that can be disguised as a civilian vehicle, due to the small size of the Zohair. In 2023, Yemen's Ansarala unveiled a variant of the Zohair called Tankel, an anti-ship ballistic missile with a small diameter, low-drag terminal imaging seeker. This missile is a significant step forward from the 280-kilometer range College Fars, based on the Fate 110. The older missile lacked a Marvi that reduces radar signature and which allows more intense evasive steering. When viewed in light of the mentioned four-container launch vehicle for the Zohair, the anti-ship variant appears as a formidable supersonic anti-ship weapon. Its small size also enables potential deployment in vertical launch containers on ships. However, within the IRGC Aerospace Forces, the Zohair has not been observed in widespread use. Despite claims of being less expensive than comparable Fateh 110 variants, 
it is likely that the carbon fiber based Zohair costs more. Given the more limited production capacities and infrastructures compared to the Defense Ministry's FATE 110, an alternative reason for why the IRGC Aerospace Forces Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization pursued the development of the Zohair carbon fiber motor casing may lie in a less apparent factor, its suitability for localized production by members of the Iran-led Axis of Resistance. Given that these actors largely lack the industrial infrastructure required to manufacture metal alloy motor casings, carbon fiber alternatives present a pragmatic solution. Iran would only need to supply weaving machinery and adequate quantities of high-grade carbon fiber to facilitate domestic production of the casings, which constitute the largest and most difficult to smuggle structural component of a ballistic missile. Thus, in addition to advantages for air-launched missiles, the ease of production with minimal resources likely served as a key motivator behind the Zohair's development. It is expected to serve as a limited quantity, special-purpose weapon to counter regional missile defense systems like the Patriot Pac-2. Anti-shipping variants are particularly attractive because quad launches can enable ripple launches of several Zohair missiles against adversary naval ships equipped with missile defense systems. The enhanced survivability of the compact low footprint missile also makes it appealing for deployment by forces such as Lebanon's Hezbollah, offering improved capabilities over the Fateh 110 and addressing Israeli missile defenses more effectively. The reason Yemen's Tankil anti-ship variant failed to actually critically damage or sink U.S. Navy vessels during the year-long conflict is best explained by the advanced missile defense capabilities of these warships. Aegis-equipped vessels and aircraft carriers operate exclusively within naval groups, never in isolation. Moreover, as they are the primary targets, defending themselves is inherently more manageable than protecting expansive areas like cities. Interceptors can be launched at the very last moment if prior attempts fail to neutralize an incoming threat. Such late-stage engagements ensure interceptors operate at peak kinetic energy, enhancing their ability to counter aggressive evasive maneuvers, such as those executed by a tankil marv. Consequently, only coordinated salvos involving sufficient numbers of missiles stand a realistic chance of overwhelming the defenses of an Aegis-equipped naval group and achieving hits. While it remains unclear whether Yemen's Anasarala sought to escalate hostilities by launching a large-scale salvo, potentially involving a dozen or more tan kills simultaneously, such quantities would be necessary to penetrate the Aegis combat system, given its vast magazine depth and layered defenses. Nevertheless, the US Navy confirmed spending hundreds of high-cost standard missile family interceptors to neutralize Yemen's sporadic attacks, underscoring the intensity of the defensive effort. In summary, the Zohair aeroballistic missile represents a significant advancement in Iran's missile technology, combining compactness, high performance, and versatile deployment options to enhance Iran's strategic and tactical capabilities in regional conflicts. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.